I am Adil Kumar. Welcome to my series on integrals. We'll begin with analyzing the fundamental theorem of calculus, part 1. The most important application here is to find derivative of the integral itself. Now, the fundamental theorem of calculus, part 1, states that if f is continuous on closed interval a to b, then the function g defined by g of x equals to integral from a to x of f of t dt where x is between a and b is continuous on closed interval of a and b and differentiable on open interval of a and b and derivative of this integral g prime x or derivative of this integral is equal to the integrand itself do you see that? So that is a fundamental theorem of calculus. Based on this, we can solve all questions related to combination of derivative and integrals, right? So we kind of inverse it out, right? So we have five different questions here. Some may require chain rule. So we'll see how to solve them one by one. And these are all the possibilities which you could explore while working on this exercise and that is what is expected from test point of view also. So the very first one is a straightforward question d dx of integral from 2 to x of cos t squared dt. Now the function cos t squared is continuous within the domain 2 to x, correct? And its integral, we know, is also continuous in this open interval 2 to x. Same is the case with all other examples which I have taken. Sine 3t cos t square, right? And then we have last question slightly different. Okay, we'll get to that. So let us see how to solve them. The very first one is straightforward. We can straight away apply the fundamental theorem of calculus and write down our result. So we are looking for the derivative of this integral. So derivative of this integral is the function f of x. So, so the answer for this clearly is cos of x squared, right? Cos of x squared. That's what we get. Okay. Now, in the second case, what has happened really is that the limit is from, not from a constant to x, not from a to b, but it's written some in the reverse order, x to 1. Now that, we could rewrite this as negative of d dx, an integral from 1 to x of sine 3t dt, correct? So now, we could write down the result here as negative, so this negative, right? and sine of 3x, correct? So that becomes the result for part b, right? So, so I hope uh, these two examples are absolutely clear. And that is for b, right? Now in the other two, what you find here is that it is from 1 to x cubed, a function. And the second one is from a function to another function. Do you see that? So in these two cases, we'll apply the chain rule. So we'll substitute the variable and then solve. The fifth part here is slightly different. We'll first have the derivative and then the integral and we'll see how to do that, correct? So that is a twist to the above question and this is a very popular test question. So now let's see how to do part C. So in part C, we want to figure out derivative from 1 to x cube of cos of t squared dt. So in such cases, you need to substitute. So let's substitute u equals to x cube, right? Now, if e, u is substituted as x cube, then we can change this equation. So we can write d dx of integral from 1 to u cos of t square dt, correct? But this is u now, right? So 
We'll apply the chain rule now. So with the with chain rule, we can write d du, right? Integral 1 to u of cos of t squared dt du dx. Correct? So that becomes the chain rule, right? Now, this part, using the fundamental theorem of calculus, we can write this as cos of u square, right, times du dx. Now, u was x cubed. So, what is du dx? Let's write it down. So, du dx is 3x squared. You get the idea, right? So, so times 3x squared. So, replacing u with x cubed, what do we get? We get this as equal to cos of x cube and then square means 6 right times 3x squared is that correct so what do you notice here is we do the substitution and then apply the chain rules so in this case first step is substitution and then we have chain rule is that clear right so alternately I could have done it directly also I could have written d dx from 1 to x cube for cos of t square dt as equal to now this is your integral right so so the integral of this let us say it is uh, we are finding of x cube right so we could write this as equal to cos of instead of t squared x cube whole square times derivative of x cube d dx of x cube right this is alternate way of doing the same thing now what you get here is cos of x to the power of 6 times 3x square rewriting you could write this as 3x square times cos of x to the power of 6 correct same thing right so it's better to write in that form so i hope you understand basically we are doing a substitution right once you do substitution then you have your function in terms of u you need to find the derivative of the function and multiply by that so chain rule is applied so if we have a function here instead of x if you have a function of x in that case we need to apply the chain rule that is kind of important to understand right now in the next example what we have done is that we have taken both lower bound and upper bound as functions you get the idea right so basically now let us say that we are trying to evaluate the the integral which is from square root of x to x square of cos of t square dt. All right. So, so in this particular case, what really happens is when we do the derivative of this, when you do d dx of this function, right, under the given conditions, then what we happens when you find the derivative of this, you get d dx of a the function square root and x square right minus this times square root of x correct that is what you get now you could write this as equal to applying the chain rule we can write this as of x square times derivative of this which is 2x correct minus in this case a dash of square root of x times derivative of square root of x which is 1 over 2 square root of x you get an idea right that is what you get so substituting here back we have cos of t square right so we could write this as cos of x square t square right so that is x square square times 2x minus 
Here we'll replace this by square root. So we get cos of square root x whole square times 1 over 2 square root of x. Correct? So you can rearrange and write your answer as 2x times cos of x to the power of 4 minus so here we have square root x you can write this as uh, 2 minus 1 right so which is uh, square root so so we could write this 1 over I'm not rationalizing I'm writing it like this itself so you may rationalize this actually right so we'll write like this itself for the time being cos of x correct so that becomes your result when we have both upper and lower bounds as functions right so apply the chain rule once again on both these sides perfect so that is how you do such questions so i hope the concept is absolutely clear now let's take the last example in which we have first we need to find the derivative and then the integral right so it's kind of reverse however from the fundamental theorem we do get a similar result we'll get x cube over x square plus one but the limit is from one to two right that limit will be applied and what we get here is two cube over two square plus one minus one cube over 1 square plus 1 or we get here 8 over 4 plus 1 is 5 minus 1 over 1 plus 1 is 2 right that's what we get so taking common denominator of 10 we can have 8 times 2 as 16 minus 5 times 1 as 5 we get 11 over 10 as our answer correct so that is how we can solve this type of question so i hope with that you get fairly good idea of how to answer the questions where we are using this combination of derivatives and integrals so the fundamental theorem of calculus really comes handy important thing to consider before applying this theorem is that ensure that the function is continuous on the given domain right that is kind of important to understand now once again if we are given a function as one of our upper or lower bounds for integral in that case chain rule will be applied is that very clear second if first we are doing the derivative then the integral then we work like a definite integral and we need to evaluate the answer as we did right so in the first four cases we get a function as our answer right so so here in these four cases our answer is a function right here we get a value you understand so that is again a difference which is to be appreciated when you solve these questions i hope that helps Feel free to write your comment, share your views, and if you like and subscribe to my videos, that would be great. Thanks for your time and all the best.